COVID-19 pandemic has affected yet another airline, as Virgin Australia files for administration. The airline has done this voluntarily after recording around £2.5 billion in debt as well as having £714 million bailout request from the federal government being rejected. On top of that, Virgin Australia's owners have been unwilling to give the airline more funding. The airline is expected to officially make the announcement on Tuesday morning, at which point administrators will be appointed. The government has offered $200 million to help bail out the airline, but it came with conditions including such federal backing, debt restructuring, shareholders contributing, and its headquarters remaining in Brisbane and ongoing regional flights to be secured. Now, in terms of the history of the airline, it was just shy of its 20th anniversary, having commenced operations in August 2000 as its previous name of Virgin Blue, which commenced with two aircraft on a single route. Following the collapse of Ansett Australia in September 2001, its market share domestically began to rise. In order to have any level of growth going into the start of the next decade, the airline had decided to begin code-sharing agreements with United Airlines. It also had signed domestic deals with regional express airlines. The next big code share came from Garuda Indonesia in November 2007, beginning its Asian expansion. In the same year, Vietnam Airlines also approached the airline and signed an agreement with the firm, solidifying more Asian connectivity. In 2008, Virgin Australia implemented a premium class economy throughout its entire fleet, with it being installed in the first three rows of the cabin, offering priority check-in and all-inclusive flight services. December 2010 saw Virgin Blue name enter into alliances with Etihad Airways and Air New Zealand, before seeking approval with Delta for cooperation on Trans-Pacific services. This was later rejected by the US Department for Transport at first, before being approved in June 2011. Also within the same year, the airline began to get into a duopoly of the Australian market by introducing a new aircraft livery, new uniforms, a new inboard menu, and thus Virgin Australia was born. On top of this, aircraft such as the A330 and the Boeing 777-300ER were acquired in order to compete with Qantas. During the rebrand, it was at that point the Virgin Blue name would have been scrapped so then it could attract more business travellers away from Qantas. Air New Zealand also announced at the time that it would take a shareholding stage, valued between 10 and 14% of the carrier. As the years passed on, other firms and other airlines such as Singapore Airlines, HNA Group and others began investing more money into the airline, with Air New Zealand eventually dropping out in 2016, selling its remaining 2.5% stake to the Nashan Group. The airline since has grown its fleet to 98 aircraft, serving 56 destinations. Now going into administration, the airline has had to shut down its New Zealand operations on April the 4th, sacrificing 600 jobs in the region. They've also suspended trading on the Australian Stock Exchange last week due to its deteriorating financials. April 16 then saw the Australian government announce that it will subsidise rescue flights for the carry on Qantas. It's understood that 10,000 direct and 6,000 indirect jobs will be affected by this move. So, what will happen now that the airline is in administration? Well, the administrators will be assessing the airline's situation and negotiating with shareholders and creditors for the best outcome. This will likely include to find new owners for the airline to keep it operating. If that's not possible, then they will sell off all assets to repay creditors as much as possible. If the airline does liquidate, then creditors will probably only get back a fraction of what they put into the airline. The airline has suspended all scheduled flights a week ago, although within the past few days the airline has restarted a few domestic routes due to government subsidies for them. Now one of the things that makes Virgin Australia unique and which made the optics of bailout complicated is the company's ownership structure. In addition to Richard Branson having a stake, three other airlines own a majority of the airline. Etihad Airways owns around 21% stake, Singapore Airlines owns a 20% stake and the HNA Group owns around 20. On top of that, Qantas and Virgin Australia have been engaged in a fight. 
Qantas management have said that Virgin Australia had problems long before this started and they stated that the country shouldn't look after badly managed companies which have been badly managed for 10 years, which I find quite funny. Now with the airline filing for administration, it also means that 23 of the 737 MAX aircraft that have been ordered are certainly under jeopardy. The deal was placed in 2012 before expanding to 38 aircraft later on in the decade and then cut back to 23 with some order deferrals into 2021. It could be suggested that these deferrals were as a result of negative financials in the company as well as the ongoing 737 MAX crisis taking further effect. So the general theme for last year was volatility especially with so many airlines like Thomas Cook and others going under. It seems that 2020 will now begin to continue that trend as we approach what is seen as the peak of the virus. Only time will tell how the industry will survive and how. It's also important for Australia to have at least two semi-global full-service airlines. In some ways, maybe this is what Virgin Australia has needed all along. The airline has lacked a strategy largely due to the complicated owner structure and maybe this situation can change the fate of the airline. Thank you so much for watching captains, leave your opinions and thoughts in the comments below, like and subscribe for more aviation videos and I'll catch you guys very soon.